In a room, a bunch of self-identifying young women. And allies and non-binaries and drag queens and mistakes and hamsters. In separate rooms, we should also say, being women. You know how the song goes. We are strong. We are brave. We are born leaders. We are fierce, honey. We are not to be underestimated. We are enough. We are beautiful. We are powerful. We are unstoppable. We are incredible. We are talented. We are blah blah blah. We are flipping bored. It's not a chorus that could communicate our discontent sufficiently. We want to cause some mischief. We want to dance on bar tops with or without our tops on. You want to rob a bank and get away with it, so we wouldn't have to sit here day after day thinking about which grant to apply for job might last past the recession. We would like to rip down the walls, hiding hallways of hapless politicians, and just take over. Start over. Bulldoze their basicness into a renewable energy source that will light up our new world into the raging fire that fuels us and burns us and drains us and chars us. We may be enough. But we have had enough of strong and brave and beautiful being enough. We want to be criminals. <laughs> we want to break every single law laid down to make life limp. We could be good, uh, we could be the best, and it would not pass the power test. Because look at who we have in Westminster. Look at who's taken the piss out of our laws and our good, clean thoughts every single day. No, because if that's how we have to roll to run things, we're game. We always have been. Because women are not just mothers and daughters and sisters. We're motherfuckers too. And we're coming for you. Shut up, Shut up and, and sit down. down. We are the bored women of the rooms. My name is Deborah. Jaya. Chelsea. ER. Molly. Luke. Joining you from our rooms in 2021. Rooms date back to 2200 BC. Excavations in San Serini have shown early known structures with clearly defined rooms. But if you believe that a tomb is a room, a room for your deathbed, basically, your forever room. And they've been doing those in Ireland since at least 3600 BC, and then of course, globally. So basically, there's been a lot of rooms like this, and uh, a lot of women, an estimated 54 billion women have existed on this planet since the beginning of time. And there's around three and a half billion women on this planet right now and each of them goes into a room at some time 
even if if it is not a room of one's own rooms have always had women in them imagine there's probably never a room a woman hasn't been in like even the ones they still aren't allowed inside like some of those London Pall Mall members clubs like they probably still clean them or deliver something to them or pick something or someone up from them unless it's like the Mount Athos and Peninsula I mean mm. there's thousands of rooms with thousands of men across hundreds of kilometers but women aren't allowed in a single one of them not even female animals are allowed in there not within 500 meters of the ah, house. Ah, 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 ah. Unless the female animal is a cat. You know, pussies are okay because they catch the many mice that would otherwise eat all the food. And you know, the plus side of this no female animals except cats thing is, it makes it being vegan very easy. (laughs) This is Greece, by the way. Not some faraway place that gets some good old European funding to tackle its gender discriminatory policies. The only women who have entered Mount Athos have done so illegally. And in <laughs> starving Greek raiders who stole flocks that were allowed within the coast. And dressing up as a man got 12 months penalty prisons. Even some cr- other criminal women have tried that. Criminal women in prison. Uh, well, some of them. Some of them are not. Some of them are in prison for crimes they didn't even commit. Or maybe did commit. But if they did, then 80% of those crimes were non-violent and mainly shoplifting, theft or fraud offences. The thing, the people at the very top of our power structures are experts at. So stealing without the protection of the law is pretty much what they're locked in those rooms for. Away from families and children and jobs and hobbies and love. Rooms where they're needed and that don't cost the public an average of £37,643 per year to lock. I mean, some criminal women have never been caught by the law, or strangely, or not so strangely, haven't been caught by the global imagination industry either. Hardly any books, never any films, I mean, comparatively anyway, just think, Al Capone, the craze, Pablo Escobar, more famous the fairy tales. And we're not including serial killers here, though all these lot had bodies that added up, sure. But it's more about the empire built, the empires they built illegally against the norms of society. But in the same way the normalised empire builders did too, just one was posh and the other wasn't. And the murder parts were to keep being able to commit the crimes they committed without being stopped or caught or, you know, <laughs> killed themselves. Which isn't an excuse, they're still killers, but they were the criminals first, not the other way around. Which is maybe semantics, but it's the bit that we're interested in. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So where, where are the women like this? Not in the top 10 Google of famous criminals, that's for sure. I mean, Bonnie gets a mention. Clyde adjacent, of course, which is not insignificant that the only women criminals that are household names are the ones who worked out their criminal crossword worlds with their intimate male partners. Those with husbands, boyfriends, lovers, these women might not be allowed, might be allowed to get famous for being. Bent against society's norm rather than their own ingenuity and lawless ferocity of their own. Can we just think, yeah, it might be too many hours on Zooms in our rooms drinking rosé, but I thought uh, simply that if we don't acknowledge that women since time immemorial have been motherfuckers too, for power, for fame, for money, without any baby to protect, Wrong to avenge. I mean, really, are women just like that? If we don't get recognised for the bad shit, then we can't possibly get recognised for the normal boring stuff we do. Like... uh, Growing tomatoes. Mm. Trying to keep houseplants alive. Me painting my bedroom walls. Running a million dollar business from my bedroom. 
<laughs> Writing a book? Finishing a book, for example. So we want to raise a glass to some criminal women. We have cocktail makers. Mixologists, as we like to be called. Mm. Making and mixing cocktails to raise these criminal women. And by drinking them down, we hope to get drunk and a bit less bored. Yes, but also to remember they were there. Mm. They are here. And in the rooms mm. of power, criminals roam, stealing from the people doing much worse things than these women ever did. Yeah. And so with every sip, which does not have to be alcoholic, we hope that you remember this too. There's a major cocaine dealer in Miami. 15 milliliters of fresh lime juice. Becoming one of the biggest drug dealers in the Western Hemisphere during the 1970s and 80s. 20 milliliters of wine syrup. She invented the motorbike drive-by killing but used any method going to get rid of her enemies that seemed the slightest hindrance. 250 people legend has it, including three of her ex-husbands. She got one of them and six of his bodyguards with an Uzi in a nightclub car park because he betrayed her on a deal. 20 milliliters of beetroot juice. She spent 19 years in American prisons, 23 hours in a 4x4 four four room. That's 131,765 hours in a room before being deported back to her original home of Colombia. 15 millilitres of orange juice. Where she was shot in the street. Ironically, by the very drive-by bike killing she invented. She was carrying a hundred and fifty pounds worth of meat and a Bible under her arm. Three salt flakes. All the ingredients in a shaker. Shake with cubed ice for six seconds and strain it to a tall glass. Finish with a lime twist. What was she doing with all that meat? The Bible. Feasting to remember those she'd killed or to forget them blood, blank by blood offering sacrifices to the statues of Catholicism repenting flesh with flesh tonight we will feast pray to the Virgin Mary for her blessing and we will sing a song of the names of those we've killed it will be a long song. Maybe she was cooking for the homeless, distributing pork chops and sirloin steaks to the streets while reciting her favourite passages from Genesis. But see, there we go again, giving her a redemptive ending, when men who have killed so many for their cocaine thrones need none, do they? So no. She stays there, dead in the stone by rival gangs, covered in the meat she was going to eat or feed to the young men she paid to bathe her in rose water, using the Bible to pledge their allegiance to her. The La Madrina. Hmm. Yes. It tastes good. One 
Iron Metal Challenge. 200 milliliters of brown ale. And an ancient Egyptian woman called Nesmet, a leader of tomb robberies in the Valley of Kings in the 20th dynasty. One teaspoon of honey. Not much else is known, but we can suppose that as this much is known, she was caught and it was recorded. And perhaps she faced the same sentencing as other women caught for conspiracies against the powerful men who kept them in a harem. Noses and ears cut off. Or, as a special treat, invited to commit suicide. It was a time of minimal crime, supposedly. Or things seen as a crime now weren't then. Who can say? They did consider tomb raiding the very worst crime. To plunder the sacred resting rooms of the greats. So it is likely she faced death. Decapitation, drowning, being burnt alive. 50 milliliters of extra smoky whiskey. Combine all the ingredients in a cocktail shaker and fill with ice. Before this though, Nesmet led the way through those limestone tombs. Marble room after marble room. Masterful at trickery. Architecturally telepathic. Unmapped mazes unfazing to her strong eyes and arms. Holding a lamp in one, removing stone with another. To eventually stealthily, successfully, steal the gold and emeralds of kings and queens. Until, of course, the day she was caught and it was recorded, allowing us to know this, which begs the question, how many other women criminals of history are untold just because they were too fucking good at it? And we can probably add all queens to the criminal category too, depending on your politics, which we won't discuss today. We don't have enough alcohol, so nothing to fear. We'll leave them alone for now and allow time to judge or atone their ways of accumulating their wealth, whether it was stolen back by women like Nesmet or not. Bottoms up, the Tomb Raider. Number three, Ching Shi, Madame Ching, terrorised the China Seas in the late 1800s. Two drops of poppy seed tincture. Has appeared in parts of screen, including parts of the Caribbean. Here, she's solo, leading alone, like she did back then with 40,000 men, women and children under her unforgiving wing, the most successful pirate in the whole of history. 50 milliliters of dark rum. Never caught, fought the British, the Portuguese and the Qing dynasty. Three peeled and de-stoned lychee fruits. Her rules were strict and cruel, though sometimes pretty good it could be said. No pirate was to steal from the villagers that sold them supplies. And pirates who raped female captives were then beheaded. Yes! But that then meant that consensual sex meant death for both parties. And they were strapped to cannonballs and thrown overboard. And disobeying at all rules meant beheadings. So, you know. 25 milliliters of sweet and sour. She started her career as a sex worker. And at 26, married a notorious pirate, had two kids, and when he died five years later, took the whole enterprise over. 
expanding it to be the force that only the Portuguese could get to surrender years later. When Ching hung up her eye patch, she married her adopted son, had two more kids and opened a brothel in her 40s. We've been told so many lies, haven't we? 25 milliliters of cherry brandy. Combine all the ingredients into a blender and blend thoroughly. What did she do with all that money? Like, made on the backs of beheaded necks and girls who would have sex with whoever could pay? And she must have given plenty of it to her family. You know, they were at her deathbed crying, crying for this criminal woman, their mother, their friend. Cherry Martini. <coughs> oh, this one's strong. Marion Boyd, Countess of Abercorn. Marion Boyd had nine children who survived 16th century Scotland. That was pretty good going. Maybe she thought it was luck, or maybe she thought it was the double power of Protestant prayer from her husband, James Hamilton. Second Earl of Abercorn, who did some Irish colonising for King James and her own Catholic council. An unusual pairing for that time, and perhaps that's why, as thanks for the nine children surviving, she promised to raise her kids Catholic. This one is non alcoholic. Ironic? Yes. Blind eyes were given to this wish until her husband died. Then she was excommunicated from the Church of Scotland and locked in Edinburgh's Toral Booth cells for two years. An uncharged criminal awaiting charges for believing in the same God, but differently. Take time to make your own iron brew simple syrup by pouring a can of iron brew into a pot, warming it on the stove until it reduces to a syrup consistency. Two years it took for laws to decide. There wasn't any charge to be made and the cells were needed for witches and whatnots. So she was put on house arrest at her home in West Lothian to make sure she did not sneak out to meet Catholic priests who had to keep things under wraps but were not themselves under house arrest. She died soon after she arrived. Half a shot of ginger and lemongrass cordial. A criminal woman without being charged of a crime. Detention without trial. It's still all the range. I hope for what time Marion couldn't leave the house. She found a room with a window overlooking the green slopes and the purple orchids of Duntreath. Maybe asking a remaining child to pick some and put them in a vase so that she could see them even when it got dark outside with their pink and purple spots and stripes on three low blips. Perhaps she imagined walking in the sharp fresh air without a guard and when she knew she could never do so again, she stuck the cone-shaped cluster of spiked flowers to her heart and made its chamber split apart to escape room after room of nowhere to go. To finally throw freely through Scottish hills and castle walls. But who really believes in ghosts? Shake the shot of ginger and lemongrass cordial and half a shot of iron brew syrup over ice. Strain and serve in a gin lit glass. Marion's mocktail.
So finally, death. Or the Black Widow, as Linda Carby has been nicknamed. 75 millilitres of black vodka. East London, born and bred, a loving 1950s Stepney childhood, working on the Roman Road Market selling wigs with her mother. Until she fell in love with a bank robber, married him and lived happily ever after. Until Linda was tipped into getaway driving after her husband was shot dead by police during a botched bank robbery job. And then soon after, she was the one with the guns out, doing plenty of the getting, not just the getting away. Plenty of ice. Vodka, lime and soda was her favourite drink after a hard day of work. Five millilitres of fresh lime juice. Bursting through heavy doors to demand bags filled with cash and rings and all things sellable. One teaspoon of edible pearl dust. She tells a better in her book. Written this year, after 18 and a half years in a prison cell, for murdering her then-husband, apparently. Shake all the ingredients together, extra pearl dust to the bottom of a coupe glass, and strain cocktail into it. She denies it. The murder of him. Not her life of crime, of leading armed robberies around London of being proposed to by men who did what she did, but whose names will go down in history. Charles Bronze and Reggie Cray saying, no thanks, and doing things her way. This one's for you. Sip it slow. The Black Peter. And so what about us now? You. We're still in our rooms. Still unsure of what we can do that is really a crime. Well, not really a crime in the eyes of ethics, only politics. And that a crime that will get some of us celebrated and other of us punished. Yeah. But at least now we're a bit pissed or high on halal, fizzy Harry bore the meditative melody of proper green tea. Whatever's your fix your thing. We have been here to bring you what we brought you. Dubious drink recipes. Mm -hmm. And a gaze. A bored woman in the room gaze on other women who were doomed by the sort of world we say we don't want but we still build. Who were mostly, except our Scott of course, <laughs> not very nice women. If you add everything up but then whoever does. It's mm. confusing as fuck. Mm -hmm. But we've still got stuff yeah. to celebrate, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, uh, bringing down the government. <laughs> <laughs> still managing to keep those houseplants alive. Living my life before I retire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still running that million dollar business out of my bedroom, boys and yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally getting some decent Wi-Fi, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Learning to <laughs> walk in those high heels. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and so we celebrate through the confusion to find our way to some sort of truth. We hope we told it how we could. Pass it on. Okay, slangy bar. Thank you.